Coach. Um, today we're going to talk to you a little bit just about um, some youth speed and conditioning. We're actually um, kicking off a youth speed and conditioning camp um, this summer that will be starting on June 4th and running through the end of August. Um, it'll be every Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 12, uh, from 12 noon till 1 o'clock. And um, it's basically for athletes, uh, boys and girls, ages uh, about 10 to 14 with that. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, just speed and condition training, strength training with, with younger kids and some misconceptions that people have with that a little bit. So our beer for today um, comes from New Belgium. It's a double IPA and it's a, a called Guava Spruce um, double IPA. So it's got guava in it and um, some pine spruce needles in it and um, it's a stronger double IPA 7.6. So we're gonna give it a little try here and uh, I'll drink it while we're, while we're talking here. So again, if you missed last episode, um, we talked a little bit about pouring straight down the middle and how that basically retains the flavor and where when you tilt the glass sideways, you lose a little bit of the aroma and flavor of the beer. So by going down the middle, you have to wait a little bit longer for it to, to settle down um, and then continue pouring in there. But it creates a nice creamy head on there, a little bit more flavor into your beer. Um, also too, that allows the beer to warm up a little bit and at a slightly warmer temperature than just like cold um, right out of the fridge, you get more flavors um, and you're able to taste more flavors because you don't have the cold kind of competing for them there. So, all right, so as we're waiting for that to settle down, we'll start talking here a little bit about some youth um, conditioning. So the first thing that we want to work on with, with young athletes is developing good movement patterns. Um, we tend to see with, with this age group that there's a lot of tightness and stiffness going on with them. Um, a lot have come through gr growth spurts and maybe they had good movement and a lot of coordination prior to that and now they, they've lost some of that. Um, if it's been a lot of growth, we sometimes see that they just they don't have that control of their, their arms and legs like they used to. So we want to work on regaining that a little bit, get good movements, teaching them how to squat, teaching them how to, to lunge and to hinge the hips and things like that. And these are all movements that are going to basically carry over into their sports. Um, for example, the hinge, which would be like a kettlebell deadlift, a um, kettlebell swing, is one of the most powerful movements because it involves the hips. And again, this carries over into sports, whether it's tackling an opponent in football, whether it's throwing something, swinging a golf club, swinging a baseball bat, any of that stuff involves powerful hips. So the hip hinge movement helps develop that. Um, squatting is, is good, it helps us again, we have to have that hip mobility to get down in there, good ankle mobility, um, some core stability with that. And then with lunging, it's basically like coming down, run into field or ground ball where you have to sort of drop down into one knee um, and just some different positions that way. And then we also want to make sure that they have strong cores. Um, this is from an injury prevention standpoint, um, but also just from a, a functioning standpoint. So if their core is strong, they're going to have better movement, they're going to be better athletes, you're going to be able to generate greater power um, by having a strong core, because that's where everything is coming from there. All right, so we tried the beer here a little bit, and um, it's pretty good. It's got a little guava taste to it. You can taste the pine notes coming through it, and then it's got a very um, strong hop. Uh, flavor or hop aroma with it, so it's a good beer. It's definitely a probably a one and done or a one and moving on to something a little bit lighter, but uh, yeah, it's a pretty good beer. So we were talking about strong is fast, and what I mean by this is every sport has benchmark um, strength levels um, for performance. So what we see with these is once at a, it, it, each sport at a different level there is a, a place in maybe in the deadlift strength and in the squat strength and in our pressing ability and things like that um, where once we get that that certain number that strong is strong enough once we go over that um, there's really no more benefit to performance on on the field so we want to try to push towards those numbers and then once we get there, we want to focus on maintaining those. It's not necessarily worth going above that because what we see is a higher risk of injury in, in the weight room, but we're not going to get any really more carryover onto the field. So that's what we mean. We want to get strong, but, we, but there is a point where strong is strong enough. And the reason we need to be strong is, 
a strong athlete is able to, to move faster, move quicker, um, they can control their body, they can create more force and, uh, and all those things that, that basically make you move faster, quicker and more agile. So this strength will carry into and plays a big part in deceleration. And this is a missing component in a lot of, um, especially with a lot of young kids with their um, sports conditioning. There's a lot, there's a high emphasis on accelerating and going fast and moving faster. But there's usually not a, a real strong um, emphasis put on slowing the body down. And the reason that this is important is the faster we can slow the body down, the faster we can cut, the faster we can move, changing directions um, and things like that. Also, the body has kind of like a natural governor on it where it will slow, it will only go as fast as it can slow its body down. So if we can slow our body down faster, we're able to, to move faster and sprint faster. A um, good example of this is with, with speed. If we can slow ourselves down as we're sprinting really, really quick, um, and from the, basically the time that a whistle blows to stop, the shorter that distance it takes us from a full sprint to stop, the faster we're gonna be able to run. And another kind of example with this that we see a lot of times is with an Olympic sprinter. They um, can sprint really fast and fly down the track, but they don't necessarily uh, make a good receiver in football. And the reason for that is, is they're good with just a straightforward speed, but by having to cut and um, change direction, they're not able to do that. Um, or do that very well, so they kind of get these rounded, you know, corners and things like that. Where if we can slow ourselves down and, and cut and change direction, we're going to be able to move faster. And we don't have necessarily, we might not have the fastest 40 time, but on the field we look really, really quick. And that's, you'll hear people talk about, they, they're not um, super fast, but they've got good game speed or fast game speed. And that's really what we're after um, there, is having good game speed. The next thing too is we need to get on one leg. And by meaning, what I mean by that is we need to do some exercises that are in a single leg stance, a split stance, um, not with both feet on the ground or both feet square. Most sports aren't played that way. They're played um, either with one foot in contact with the ground at most times or some sort of split stance, shift and weight into, into one leg or the other. So if we get strong with things like a single leg RDL, with lunging movements, with rotational lunging movements, um, we're going to get better athletic performance, we're going to get more functional athletic performance. So again, we're going to work on um, getting, all, getting all one leg, doing some single leg stuff here. So again, the athletes, they're not just strong uh, squatting straight up and down or pulling off the ground. They're going to be strong um, on one leg, changing directions and, and different things like that. And the last thing that we kind of focus on a little bit that I think gets lost in a lot of conditioning programs is transferring force or absorbing force. These both kind of go hand in hand. So again, if we get just strong moving straight up and down, up, forward and back, that's good, but we also now need to be able to absorb a force from uh, an impact. Maybe we're, we're getting hit by an opponent, or we need to sink um, in to make a cut. So again, this is where that deceleration plays into a little bit, but when we can absorb all of, all of that force and then transfer it back out the, the opposite way, it makes us more powerful, it makes us more injury resistant. Um, this can help eliminate a lot of uh, ACL injuries um, amongst other things. And again, this gets into a little bit of rotational power too when we start talking about um, transferring force. Basically, it's all gonna be transferred from the ground up through the hips, up through the core, into whatever we're doing, whether it's throwing, swinging, hitting, tackling, any of that kind of stuff. So, um, the, again, the hips and the T-spine, having those mobile and having those functioning properly are going to give us um, greater transfer force and greater ability to absorb force. Um, so those are all just kind of some of the things that we focus on with, with youth athletes, um, among other things. But basically, we just want to make them resilient. We want to teach them good movement patterns and um, you know, improve their, their sports. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I enjoyed the beer. Like, like I said, it's a little stronger, so I didn't get through it all today. But um, I recommend it. It's a nice kind of, like I said, one beer and done. So, All right, talk to you next time.